Hello YouTube friends, this is Rex Supernova, and I hope this finds you well. Today we're going to talk about Stephen King's Full Dark, No Stars, paperback edition, which is different than the hardcover. It features a fifth short story called Under the Weather that was not included in the hardback. Now, um, if you haven't tuned into part one and two of this uh, week-long book haul, of what Rex has been reading, then um, let me catch you up. So uh, I've taken everything I've been reading this week, uh, which is quite a few books, and um, giving a review on them. So today we're talking about Full Dark, No Stars. This is a originally came out with four stories. Um, I'm going to talk about in, each of them individually, and then I'm going to give you my favorite. So individually, we're going to go to 1922. 1922 is the longest, and I think the nastiest, of the short stories. 1922 is about a dispute between a husband and wife um, in a rural country. The wife's father has recently passed away, and she has inherited a hundred acres of land. Um, she wants to sell the land to a local farming industry and take all the money, go to the city and open up a salon or a bed and breakfast. The husband says, no, no, we're going to take the land, we're going to make sure that no one soils the earth, and we're going to live off the land, and even if we're poor, we're going to be happy here because we're going to be with each other. And she doesn't want any part of it. She just wants to go have fun. She wants to go to the city, do her thing. This causes a rift. They have a 14-year-old child. Um, it comes down to the husband deciding he's going to settle the dispute with murder. Of course, it's a Stephen King novel, you're going to get some murder going on. So, uh, the husband coaxes his son to help him murder his wife, and they do so. And that's within the first fourth of the short story. That is a minute portion, but a giant springboard into what happens for the rest of the novella. For regular for, for any other writer, I think that, that uh, this would have been uh, quite a, a novel in and of itself. But because of Stephen King, it's 150 pages or so, we're just going to call it a short story. But um, it, it's a fantastic read. 1922, I'm just going to tell you off the bat, my favorite short story in the whole collection. It starts and it takes you. It's written in first person. It's written as a confession. He's sitting in a hotel room, he's writing out a confession, and this is a 150-page confession from this man about what he did to his wife, what happens to his son, what happens to him, how he makes money, how he doesn't make money, how he survives, and at the end, kills himself because of everything that happened in the rest of the short story. Great, great fiction. Nasty, nasty stuff happening. It left me with some very terrifying imagery. Of, of smiling dead bodies, uh, not mouth smiling either, but I'm talking about like jugular, uh, open jugular smiling of, of dead women in uh, dried wells and shooting cows that have been uh, laid a slaughter. It's, it's a nasty piece of fiction. There's, there's no supernatural stuff happening in here, uh, but it really is, I consider it a good read. In and of itself, I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. Nearly perfect. I wish it were a little bit longer, but it feels long because he does have a quite contrived plot. Um, and it does follow him for an entire year. So it's quite a good read. 1922. Highly, highly recommend it. The second short story, I tried to get into the first time. Really wasn't into it. And then I took a break for, you know, a while. And then um, I got back into it. A while, meaning a couple hours. I took, got back into it. Big Driver. Big Driver in and of itself is a nasty short story. And once I got caught into it, it wouldn't let me go. Uh, now, Big Driver is about a female author who gives guest lectures and seminars as a way to supplement her income. So she tries to book three or four of these a month, get a nice chunk of change to kind of hold her over, 
she gets sidetracked on one of her return uh, journeys home and is subsequently raped and left for dead by a maniac. But she doesn't die. She remains alive, she finds a way to get home, and she hatches a plan to find her assaulter and get revenge. Very classic revenge story, very needed revenge story. It talks about women being uh, victims, it talks about women empowering themselves to not be victims and to avenge themselves. It's a, it, it's a nasty short story. I'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of 5. It did have some kind of slow points and there were some portions that were kind of far-fetched. And I'm going to let you read it for yourself. It's the second longest of the uh, selection that's in the book. Uh, but I think it's a very good read. 3.5 out of 5. Well worth it. Highly recommended Big Driver. The third and shortest of the selection is Fair Extension. Fair Extension is about a man, our protagonist, who has cancer. He finds a gentleman on the side of the road uh, doing some vending late in the evening and he is selling extensions. What kind of, whatever kind of extension you want. Hair extensions, beard extensions, nose extensions, penis extensions, life extensions. He sells the protagonist an extension on his life. You have cancer, I'm gonna extend your life. But I'm not gonna take your cancer away. You have to give your cancer to somebody else. And he gets to decide who he gives it to or who is affected by the cancer to whom he gives it to. So it's a nice little twisted uh, tale, fair extension, very reminiscent of classic Stephen King with a little bit of supernatural, uh, possibly a devil in there, and there is a, an anagram of devil in the, I guess you'd call the antagonist uh, name. Um, I'm going to give that one a 3.5 also. It's a nice quick read, not too bad, about 40-50 pages. Um, it's all right. It's pretty good. The last one, A Good Marriage, there is a film made by A Good Marriage, of A Good Marriage. A Good Marriage is about upright, standing citizen, always does the right thing, spick and span garage, but his wife comes across this evidence of him being a murderer known throughout that region of the U.S. So, she has to decide, am I going to turn him in? Am I going to keep the secret to myself and just let her life go through because we have kids and a family and jobs to think about? Or am I going to do something needed about this situation? A good marriage, good read, you know, kept my attention. I'm going to give it a three out of five. Wasn't the best, but uh, I would have made, if, if I had some, I am a filmmaker, but if I had some budget money, I totally would have made 1922. That would have made, I, I'm also an illustrator, and if I had the time, uh, maybe I should find it, I would illustrate 1922. If somebody out there watches this video and has seed money to support me while I illustrate 1922, I will illustrate 1922 from Stephen King's Full Dark, No Stars. Mr. Stephen King, if you're out there watching my video right now, if you pay for my living expenses, I will illustrate Full Dark, No Stars for you. One condition. I want to sit down and have a beer with you. That's it. That's my only condition. We don't have to, we don't have, to have a beer. We can, we can have a coffee if you want. We can have a coffee. We can have a Pepsi if you'd like. Um, but I would love to illustrate 1922, and I might just do that anyway. Um, then, the last story, Under the Weather. Another piece of kind of sidewinding fiction, kind of takes you on some weird perspectives. Uh, it's about a gentleman written in first person. He's talking about his, his uh, sick wife, how she needs rest. Uh, there are all these clues. The book is, the, the short story is all about little clues of what's happening, but he doesn't give you the information until the very, very end. And you're, you're expected to kind of build up this information as you go along, you know, you're starting to think and he gives you these little things to, 
to, to bring you along this, this trail that he's setting for you. And then he snaps and he gives you this shocking reveal, which if you're paying attention, shouldn't be that shocking. Under the weather, it's a fair short story. I give it a 3.5. Again, my favorite, 1922. I'm reviewing Full Dark, No Stars, the paperback edition by Stephen King. Overall, as a, as a book collection, I'm going to give it, I'll give it a 3, 3.75. I'll give it a 3.75 as a short story collection. Some nice meaty stories to sink your teeth into. Some quick ones, and they're nasty. I don't think that Stephen King would have published this as Stephen King in the 80s. I think he would have written under Richard Bachman. But because everyone knows that secret already, he can't really do that. He just is who he is now. So instead of being Richard Bachman, which I think he would have written these as under a pseudonym, um, they're just nasty Stephen King stories. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for part four of four of my second week of December book haul. And the next one is going to be a doozy because it was my favorite of the entire week. Stay tuned. Thank you very much.